You're listening to P-R-O-X. Just as a Warriors fan, man, like it's tough. It's tough to me to look at the screen. You know, like when you when you roll on your ankle, how do you deal with those? How do you deal with those those unexpected lows or or defeats or losses? How do you how do you pick yourself yourself back up? Whatever the context of the situation, um, whatever the loss is, whatever the season of life you find yourself in, like you have to find what that moment is trying to teach you. I think um, it's a hard, hard, hard thing to do, but it's so important to allow yourself the space to, you know, let those emotions flood through and and see, you know, what what that lesson is needs to be learned, what patience might come through it. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Ryan Kugler, writer, director, producer, and founder of Proximity Media. Hi, I'm Pete Nix. I'm a producer and director of Documentary Films, director of Underrated, and the co-founder of Proximity Media. Uh, what's up? I'm Eric Payton, EP, um, co-founder and CCO of Unanimous Media. I'm Stephen Curry, co-founder of Unanimous Media, producer, and a little bit of talent. Like that. EP Steph, man, <laughs> thanks for <laughs> a little bit of talent. <laughs> EP Steph, thanks for, thanks for making the time for this, man. We really appreciate it. Um, I guess we could start with just how how everybody met, you know. Um, folks familiar with how how me how me and Pete met, but um, uh, I remember the first time that 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 we met formally, Steph. It was me, Zinzi, it was you, Aisha was there, and little and little Cannon, and we were in uh we were in uh, uh Aisha's restaurant in the mm -hmm. city, right? And you came through, had a nice little meal situation, but yeah, it was the first time. It's crazy. I don't, I'm trying to remember what year that actually was. That's probably twenty. 19, 18. 18. I think it was right 18. After, yeah. yeah, he was he was a young pup. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just turned five. So we were a five year anniversary of the, of the first run in. But yeah, um, I mean, EP way back to 2017. 2017. That is correct. Um, and thinking about the first time we met was at the same restaurant. Yeah. Actually, it was yeah. crazy. At, yeah. at International Smoke. <laughs> before the booths, nothing was in there. Nothing was in there. It was before we uh, actually opened up, or she opened up officially, and uh, had a meeting about uh, what opportunities could be in the in the media space, um, and the, the original brainchild uh, conversation of what unanimous media is now. Absolutely. Bringing us up to now, with this incredible film that we all that we all are getting ready to release out to the world um, on Apple TV Plus, you know, I, I, I love to just talk about how how you guys came to us with this with this film because that's that's where Pete comes into the equation, right? Absolutely. So I mean, y you know, me and Stefan, we 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 meet quite a bit about the unanimous slate, and it's always. Um, it's always us getting together, and usually I'll I'll put together some type of binder for him, or or some type of outline for him, and we'll just go through it, and make sure he's updated, make sure he has he has, gets a chance to have feedback, and and also he'll have ideas. Um, but this particular meeting, we I think we had went through the slate, and then I um I I, I mentioned the Davidson run, and 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 I think that. Uh, you know, with with him, he he. Um, I hate speaking about him. No, when he's right, right next yeah, to right yeah, next tell to. Me, tell me about me. <laughs> <laughs> but but he he has this superpower to like his insights are 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 like no other, right? And and so you you do get he's very specific about how he wants to tell his story, and and with this one, you know, he sat back, he thought about it. Um, I think you had said. Like, and you know, he kind of begins to talk to himself a little bit. He's like, oh, I've seen the guys in there. I've seen the guys in a little while, so, you know? And then, and then he he tells he drops it on me that he plans on to he plans to graduate, you know, this this year as well. And I was like, oh, that's a story story. Like if we can, if we can definitely, you know, document that as well, it feels like the right time. So he gave me the he gave me the thumbs up on on exploring it. I'm slow to give those two. We always joke about the red, yellow, green light of me, you know, making decisions. And sometimes it takes me a little while to get there because I got a lot of, 
ideas and just, you know, stuff rummaging through my head. So to give a, a what would you call it? Like a neon yellow light? It was a pretty bright yellow light. <laughs> You know, which is basically a green for Stephen. You know what I mean? It's a pretty bright one. So then I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I gotta get the I gotta get the neon green. And that's why, that's why I called I called you, Ryan. Cause you know, sometimes you live you you're so excited about about the opportunity. You're like, oh, this is dope. This is gonna be so great. And I had, I don't know why I wasn't thinking about you were about to go shoot Black Panther. Mm-hmm. But I I called you and um and luckily, you know, you hit, you hit, you you picked up, and and you're really excited about it. And I I 100 appreciate that. And then you 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 mentioned Pete Nix, and then I was like, okay, okay. And you mentioned the docs he had done, and I, I think I had seen the force at that time. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know if Homeroom was out, but I think I I went to go. I watched Homeroom, and I sent it to him, and then it was like an absolutely. And then and then Pete kind of came in and. I don't know if Pete, you remember that meeting. Well, I remember Ryan first coming to me with the idea. Yeah. And uh, I mean, on the one hand, it's like, you know, documentary stuff. stuff. I'm I'm trying to imagine myself like as a kid, like my dad getting an opportunity to make a film about like, you know, Cedric Maxwell (laughs) or uh, Bird. Right. Um, And I grew up, I grew up in a, in a very sports oriented environment <laughs> in, in in boston and i you know i played college uh, high school basketball uh chris havlicek was on our team i played a very important role sitting on the bench <laughs> but, you know I, I had some natural skills you know i was six foot two i was also born in, in akron and so you How know sometimes the universe just speaks to you and says you know you might want to consider this <laughs> um i i did you know i did take a a, a pause on it because i have a my background is in very serious social issue documentaries that dig into, you know, very urgent issues that America's facing that are unfolding on the stage of the Bay Area. And so that, that, that sort of, that was sort of my, um, my, ba- my backdrop. But the more I learned about sort of Steph's story and the more I, more I learned about sort of the themes that were, that were possible in this film and the, and the potential uncertainty of, oh, can he, you know, achieve this, uh, goal that he had set and uh, fulfilled this promise that he had made to his mom and to his coach, the more I started seeing the potential uh, of the project and, and getting excited about it. And then, you know, meet, meeting Steph, I remember distinctly meeting you for the first time, Steph, and uh, I think you dropped your lunch. Like, you, you, were, you were eating something, you, you fumbled it. Uh, and I, I was thinking, you know, he'll bounce back. You know, he'll bounce back. <laughs> But, you know, you looked me right in the eye and, I mean, I, I, you know, I'd heard how sort of present you were uh, w- w- with people and, and that, that got me. Um, and then I think you didn't take long for you to get your phone out and start showing me photos and videos from Davidson. And I think that the spark in your eye um, made me realize that this was something that, that you really wanted to do and that you're passionate about, your, the nostalgia for, your, for this part, this time in your life. Um, and that was the beginning. Yep. To have a meeting like that that sparked um, this project and your belief that you could tell an amazing story based on all the uh, cool experiences, the impactful experiences, the formative years of uh, you know Davidson, and even the. The entire, I guess, the or, we call it the origin story, but like the build up to why Davidson was the perfect place for me and Coach McKillop and his influence and just the community that we had built around that team and that 08 run. It's weird for me as like the focal point of the story, I guess, in the sense to kind of take yourself out of it. But the beauty in it is, you know, everybody on this on this podcast has understood the ability to tell the story of how underrated is a badge of honor and me and Ryan, we talked about it specifically, like the fact that, you know, I had people in my life that saw, you know, my potential even when I didn't and to be able to recognize that. So it's a weird, you know, experience being able to put all that together and the fact that, uh, you know, we have such a beautiful documentary to show for it is special. I, I, want, I, want, to, I want to get into that because like, for, 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 for you, Steph, and for you, EP, and I guess for you, for you P too, um, 
have, have you guys ever had moments where like you didn't believe in yourself, but somebody else did, and that was able to get you through? Because I think the film is like, a, 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 you know, it's interesting because we watching the, the 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 journey of somebody who we know eventually made it. You know what I mean? Who we know eventually, you know, exceeded all possible expectations. You know, um, but 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 for, for for all of us, all of us are are on, um, quote unquote, unlikely paths in what we in what we do. You know, um, like like Steph, can you think of a time? I mean, I mean, like, was it Coach McKillop? Was it your mom? Was it your pops? You know what I'm saying? Like, was it was it somebody else? Where, where like maybe you had maybe you had doubts internally. Somebody was like, "No, you, you got this." Yeah, I mean the uh, the 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 most impactful one in that respect is Coach McKillop for sure. And I mean, y'all have all met him, talked to him, yeah. seen seen the way he uh, how how intense and passionate he is about not just the ability to coach and lead, but just the influence that he has on on people that you know. Anybody he comes into contact with, but especially people that have, you know, all the players that have been through his program. And so, um, like even when I was making that decision to go to Davidson, there's still a little bit of a doubt about what does it mean to, you know, play Division One basketball at whatever level. And you've been hearing so many, you know, naysayers and critics about, you know, my size and, uh, you know, the eye tests that I didn't pass and all that. And the way that he just explained, like, not only do I think, you know, you're capable of being successful at this level, but I don't need you to be anything other than yourself um, in that process. Um, you know, that's such a bold, you know, powerful statement for somebody who's still trying to figure out who they really are, what they have to offer the world, and not even the world, what they have to offer to, you know, just that next level that they're about to, the next journey that they're about to embark on. So he's... And he's even still dropping me lines. I get a text message from him like every other week of um, something like truly it, it helps continue to, to form our perspective on, you know, even leadership now knowing, you know, the platform that I have and he's, he's kept me grounded and all of that. So he's definitely the, uh, the figure for me in that one. What about you, EP? Yeah. Um, I, I think I've had a, a couple couple people definitely believe in me when when I was sort of but I think the 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 best the biggest and the brightest one was um was Snoop right so when I was I used to I always I always give the caveat is don't don't YouTube these but I used to <laughs> direct music videos in a former life and I'm go googling that immediately <laughs> right now <laughs> But um, but I was doing them, and I was doing them, um, and you know, music videos are a tough grind. I, they, they were they were the thing that I always wanted to do. Like coming up, I was I was just like Hype Williams and Spike Jones, and like music videos were like my thing. Um, and so I'm sitting in bed, and I and I had been doing them, and I had like this break, and I was pitching for bigger ones, right? I was literally pitching against my idols, and I'll write these treatments, and there would be like, there was a lot of no thank yous. And I'm sitting in my room, and I'll never forget it. It's like 11 o'clock at night, and I get this phone call from this unknown num number, and it's and it's Snoop. No, it's actually not Snoop. It's his manager. His manager's like, Snoop wants to meet with you. And I'm like, what? He's like, Snoop wants to meet with you. And I was like, when? I was like, when? Okay, cool, when? He's like, right now. Can you come to the studio? And so I was like, so I got dressed. It was probably like, when I got to the studio, it was probably like midnight. And I walk in. And he, he, it was like, it was like how you meet Snoop. He's like, his hair was picked out. He was getting, he was, somebody was giving him the cornrows. You know, he might have been puffing on something. And not even might have been. He was definitely <laughs> puffing on something. And it wasn't, it wasn't even a long conversation. He just told me, I want you to do every music video on my next album. And then he, he, he gave me the songs. He was like, but you can't leave the studio with these songs. He's like, you can listen to them here. And so I spent the next, like, till, like, 5 in the morning just listening to the songs, thinking of ideas, listening to the songs, thinking of ideas. And that was probably the one. And then I, I, did, I did most of the videos on that album. But that was probably the one person. And, I mean, still, I, I mean, I know Dog to this day, and we're, we have some things with him now. But he, he gave me that opportunity and that, that, like, he just believed in me when nobody else was. was. Uh, but, yeah. Definitely Snoop Dogg was was the guy. That's amazing, man. What, what album was this, bro? 
This was Malice in Wonderland. Malice so in Wonderland. Yeah, so the oh, I Wanna snaps. Rock song. Pete, come on, man. You can't, you can't. <laughs> so, this, so, so, this, so, this, so this 2009. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 2009. Pete, that's amazing, man. Yeah, what went through your what went through your head when you when he when he when he said, "Hey, I want you to do the whole the whole album." Like, did you did you did you panic? Did you say, "Man, does he have the wrong guy?" Or were you like, "Man, let's go. This is my shot." You know, funny story is, on that music video run, you know, I also realized I don't want to do music videos no more. <laughs> <laughs> I remember where I was. I'm I'm walking and dogs in here and Jamie Fox came and like. To do this cameo and like the break dancing, mad cameras everywhere. And um, and I'm like, I'm like, I look at my, I check my bank account, I'm like, ooh, this is not the business. <laughs> when we wrapped that, I was like, all right, what what am what am I doing next? For sure. It's amazing. Who 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 was it for you, Pete? Oh man. <clears throat> well, my mom, she was sitting right there. I think she she's retired. She's gone back to to rest. But uh to try to condense it, it's a lot, but to try to condense it into a into a little bit. Um, you know, I I had a real rough time in, in, in college, kind of coming of age as a as a young man, you know, and as a young black man. What is it what did it mean to be black? I was trying to figure that out. I went to Howard. You know, a lot of my a lot of my cousins I come from a big family. Mom's one of ten, dad's one of eight. A lot of, a lot of my cousins went to HBCUs. A lot of my uncles, aunts, my dad, um, and I fell apart. I, you know, I, I collab, collapsed under the weight of of a lot of searching identity issues. Got into some trouble. Um, cycled through sort of drug rehabs. Uh, got incarcerated. Uh, always wanted to kind of like you, EP. I was the kid at our family reunions that I took. I stole my uncle Ray's video camera, and I would interview everybody. It was a Pete, the Pete Nick show, <laughs> so it was in the blood for me too. Uh, I just didn't know it until later, and 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 that sort of that sort of uh, that deep doubt that for me metastasized into some really self destructive stuff. And you know, my first documentary was about this experience and looking back and sort of interviewing all my family and friends about what they, you know, about my story through their, through, through their eyes. And my mom has a line in that documentary. Cause I, I think I went through, I don't know, six, six rehabs. Uh, and there's a line in there where she said, you know, we were going to try, you know, one more time. We just kept telling ourselves one more time and they didn't give up on me. And I remember, the I, I eventually graduated from Howard. It took me eleven years. I was on the eleven year plan. And me, and me too. I was close to that. A, <laughs> that's how we do it at HU. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I was at the. Um, we just had a little family dinner, and um, it wasn't just my my mom. It was my cousin. It was my cousin Brian. It was my sister Yana. It was it was my dad. It was my friends. Um, it was various counselors who, you know, had to deal with me along the way. And there was something about the clarity of that support that allowed me to have a vision for my future. And I remember at that party telling people through so many tears, like, I, I got a lot of ideas, you know? And, and, I, and I think that, that was, um, you know, one of the turning points. And I remember my mom was sitting in the, in, in the car. She said she was alone in a parking lot outside a mall outside of Boston. And she's, she said it was quiet. And she said, God told me that everything is going to be okay. And she, she told me that I think when I was 15. So a lot, a lot of that was before I, I had my issues, but that, that, that seed was, was planted. And um, a lot of these things you can't fully understand, you know, how we're able to transcend you know, our, either our limitations or or that those rough patches that we hit in, in, in our lives. But in, in my case, there's no question. It was my family and my friends uh, played played a massive role. But like, I, I did want to talk just about like, just about those low moments. You know what I mean? That we all go through as human beings, especially as artists. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about you, e, e, EP, when you just sharing how you 
always wanted to be a music video director and you had your dreams come true only to, only to check your bank account, look around and realize, oh man, I don't know that I want to do this, you know? <laughs> like, um, Absolutely. That's, that's like an interesting type of, that's like an interesting type of, um, of, of um, quote unquote low point. How do you, how do we deal with loss? I think Steph, one of the more cinematic and affecting moments in the film comes at the end when we see in like, um, you know, your professional career juxtaposed with, with what happened with you at, at Davidson, you know, it's tough to me to look at the screen, you know, like when you when you roll in your ankle, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, man, I don't know if I want to be reminded of this, mm-hmm. you know, you know what I mean? And and but 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 my, my question is, is like, or, or even, you know, I was there, man. I was I was literally, I don't know if you remember this, bro. I was me and Zinzi were right next to you when when Clay went down in in Game Six, 2019. We was right next to you on the sideline, bro. No, we was sitting, sitting, on sitting the next floor. to Ka- yeah. We was sitting. We were sitting next to Kawhi's Kawhi's mom and uncle, bro. How do you deal with those? How do you deal with those those unexpected lows or or defeats or losses? How do you how do you pick yourself yourself back up? Whatever the context of the situation, um, whatever the loss is, whatever the season of life you find yourself in, I think acknowledging it first and embracing whatever the emotions that come with it. We're all human beings. We all have, um, you know. A relationship with you know, with life in the sense of people you know around you, whatever the circumstance is, like you have to find what that moment is trying to teach you. I think um, it's a hard, hard, hard thing to do, but it's so important to allow yourself the space to you know let those emotions flood through and and see you know what what that lesson is needs to be learned, what patience might come through it. I think the biggest thing for me is it's always pushed me back to the process of whatever I'm doing um, and reminding myself of, you know, there's there's fun and joy in that. There's growth, there's evolution in it. Um, the unpredictability of life is something that you have to kind of accept. Um, but as long as it pushes you back towards that process, I feel like for me it's, it's reminded me I can't be results based. You know, I can't be looking at the the end result of something and whether it shines, uh, you, you feel like you had something to do with that, whether it's a failure, you feel like you could have done something better, but the process can always um, center you, I guess, in the sense of like, this is, I know I'm supposed to be doing X, Y, Z, and I know I've put everything I have into, you know, X, Y, Z, and, and I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, I might, you know, have to make some some adjustments or surround myself with some different people or, um, you know, push myself out of a certain comfort zone or, you know, find a different way of looking at certain things. But I think the process for me has always been the the the, the secret sauce of of um, just being able to make sure I, I enjoy whatever I'm doing or whoever I'm around, and um, and that will help me kind of, you know. Uh, accept you know the uh, the results of the realities that you find yourself in because some of that stuff's un- uh, so uncontrollable. If you obsess over that, then you're going to continue to be chasing shadows. Um, right. That's that's never a, that's never a good place to be. Hey, and Steph, man, just to dig in a little more. What is your process, bro? When you say the, the process, like if, yeah. I, if you was to distill it, um, I mean, first I've identified like the things that I want to put my energy towards, and that has evolved over time, right? That you always have to continue to take stock of what you're passionate in, like what projects you want to work on, um, the ways that you're developing your skill set and all that. For me, like, uh, I know everybody talks about like just finding a way to get like 1% better every day. Um, I, there's not really like a formula of how to do that. But for me, it's just like, okay, when I'm somewhere, I want to be all the way present in that moment as much as I can. It's not always, I don't execute that, you know, well always, but that's the intention. Whether I'm in the gym working out like I was this morning and then you you know, like, oh, my, you know, uh, the schedule is kind of crazy, but I want to make sure everywhere that I go that I'm fully there, fully um, in the moment, fully committed to it. Um, Finding something to learn, like trying to be aware and observant. Um, Like I said, just around how I like what thoughts pop into my head, you know, throughout the day or whatever, the, or, or what, uh, what things I feel like you know, are pulling, you know, attention or distracting me from, you know, being in the moment, those type of things. Like I have to continue to, to 
be aware of those, but just I, the being present. And then the other process is like, again, it's, it is the joy of doing everything that I do or I, that I get to do, I should say. Um, like, I mean, I, I saw, I saw, I saw that today, man, when we were at the music video, like you were really enjoying yourself, bro. <laughs> like, 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 it, like you took, you, you, you even like said it, like you took a, nobody was watching you. I think I might've been the only person looking at you at the time. And you was like, yo, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm living my best. Like I, a year ago, you told me you're going to be in a music video that's uh, done by an artist that you love that is, um, the theme song for a documentary that is coming out about a very <laughs> formative point. Like you told me that a year ago, I'm like or two years ago, what are you talking about? But in the sense of, again, like going through this process with y'all and, and understanding like what type of film we were trying to make and then understanding like, I, I got some amazing uh, talented people around me who have a perspective of helping me tell the story. I'm bringing Toby in, like him bringing his, uh, like all these, his expertise in terms of the song. And like, I got to, the end result was I was on a set filming my legit first music video. And like, to your point, I had to make sure I came in with the gratitude and appreciation. Like, this is amazing. This isn't something that's right. just filling two hours. This is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna have fun while I'm doing it. It really like, it, it taught me something in the moment. You know what I mean? Like I was, I was, I was like, yo, this dude is not only present, but he's like, he's like actually enjoying himself. And, and, and it, it made the performance better. Little fish. Big pond, big splash, big bag, little fish, big pond, big splash. Yeah. EP, how, what's your method of getting through, getting through rough patches? So I have this, um, I have this process, and it usually happens like, you know, when I'm feeling like lost. You know, I have this thing that I say to myself. It's like mind, body, and soul, which kind of sounds cheesy. But my, what I mean by mind, body, and soul is like, for my mind, I always have to be feeding my mind some type of creative opportunity or, or ingesting some type of creative, right? And and that's just my oxygen, you know, whether it be like me and my kids are trying to, <laughs> this is, my wife hates this, but me and my kids try to build something, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. or whatever, or, or like try to play at seas or, or try to, you know, whatever that is, I always have to be doing something or, or it's, you know, focusing on unanimous things and reading projects and things like that. Body, it means like, you know, I, I am, you know, I'm, I'm not a small dude now, but I used to be a little mm -hmm. bit bigger. Like when I looked at my wedding pictures, even when I met him, I was probably a little bigger. So it's important for me to constantly stay moving. Um, I, that's the thing that I really have to, to, to work at, but, but constantly stay moving, you know, walking and running and exercising and, and just whatever it is. Um, and then so it's really about being thankful, praying, um, you know, going to church. My pops is a preacher, so sometimes I'll listen to him in 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 Mississippi. Uh, when I'm when one of those things are off, evident like it, no matter what, my my life will turn turn to a wrong direction, and I'll, I'll either get a little bit down, or I'll snap, or I'll get really gr grumpy. <laughs> that's what mm -hmm. my wife says, but I will get really, uh, and that's the thing that I'll always connects it is is just remembering those three things and feeding yourself those three things every single day. So that's what that's what I do when I get lost. Pete, how about you, bro? My, my go to is actually, and and this is something I learned in recovery, is the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to, to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And and I think to know the you difference. Know, mm -hmm. It's intention. It, it, it's you know digging for that strength. Uh, but the the wisdom part is is that's that's kind of the thing for me. Whereas I'm trying to find that wisdom in, in in different ways. And and what I've found from loss from loss different different ways is that when you go through a difficult time, I, I, you know I was honestly struck like when we first started looking at all the footage of stuff from like stuff of when you were in high school. I, I saw it less in high school, but that, that stuff of um, the footage of Eastern, the Eastern Michigan game, like it was, it was actually, I, I was like, damn, <laughs> like, like you looked like, like you were a complete mess out there. You didn't, you didn't seem coordinated. It was a, it was a hundred times worse than I thought I'm, it was, I, <laughs> when I remembered. Yeah, I, mean, I was just curious, like, like what, <laughs> like, because you looked uncoordinated, and, and one of the things I've learned is like when you when you're going through doubt, or when you go if you're going through a trauma, or or self self doubt, or something like that, you can there's like a mind body 
a very important mind sort of body connection. I think that's why it, it can definitely explain how athletes can go from going through a rut or being a mess to suddenly finding their voice or getting back into it, back into that flow. But I, I, for me, it's the same thing emotionally. Like when I, I say that prayer because when I, when I get in, it's usually deep doubt is the beginning of an unraveling of some kind and trying to like basically stem that unraveling. So it doesn't, you know, you know completely unravel. Um, and you know, I just think you get wisdom from difficult situations if you're open, if you, if you have the right mindset. And so that's, that's sort of, um, you know, you know, for me, but I am just, just curious, like how, how do you, uh, cause you also saw it in, you saw it in the Davidson footage, but I think it was that one scene in, uh, the, during the season where you had that rough stretch, I think it was that Utah game where it almost looked the exact same. Like you were, you were falling down you weren't hitting any shots. Do, do, do you have like a, a process that you, something that you tell yourself or somebody that you think of? No, I mean, it's all built, like kind of what I was just, was talking about, it's just built on the, the like the opposite of doubt and obviously it's confidence in the sense, like I always say confidence is the ultimate superpower. It's like the ultimate uh, unlock. Um, and it has been for me, and it's kind of like the pattern of seeing guys go through it in the league where just that know-how, it doesn't mean it's always going to work out your way. It doesn't mean you're all going to make every shot or every game's going to be perfect. But over time, the the volume of work that you that you put in, um, you know, the trend is always up. And so there's a confidence and there's a faith that the work that you're putting in, like, will reap you'll reap benefits of it eventually. You just can't force that process or, or that time frame, and you don't know when it's gonna happen. And then when it does, you know, gratitude and appreciation has to follow because then you double down on on what it is. It can't be like the, you know, oh, I, I made it look at me or the, you know, now I can take your foot off the gas pedal in terms of, you know, everything that you put into to what you're doing. It's just more motivation to, um, to to do the work, right? And there's no shortcuts to anything. There, none of us are sitting in front of these microphones without uh, a, an intense work ethic and, you know, uh, a faith that you're building towards something great, uh, like whatever that expectation is. But it's it's fascinating when you when you hit those lows. There, it, it feels, uh, you feel lost and you feel like a fish out of water for sure, but you have a decision to make at that point. Um, and what you do at that inflection point will 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 make it a very temporary thing, or will define kind of who you are. Man, that's incredible, man. What about you, um, Ryan? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm sitting here thinking about the last couple questions, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I was thinking about the last couple questions. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't in, engage, man. Um. But 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 they they kind of have to a lot to do with each other for me because I mean a lot of people believe I mean I very rarely believe in myself you know what I'm saying <laughs> like it's like a, like a, it's a it's something um that 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 I that I that I kind of have like learned to accept you know what I'm saying like that that I that I I, I do deal with um imposter syndrome almost constantly you know um and and and, and, and the comfortability to oscillate. You know, um, where I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm a filmmaker in theory, but then when I'm on set, it's like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, am I, like, am I in the right place? Am I, am I doing the right? Am I doing the right thing? You know, and 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 learning to say, oh yeah, that's just how my brain works. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just gotta, I just gotta do the work. You know, um, but 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 I had a lot of people who believed in me and expressed confidence in me at a point when I didn't understand it or didn't see the vision. You know, I had a, a professor, Rosemary Graham, in college, recommending me getting into writing screenplays. Numerous professors in school who would pull me to the side you know, once I got to graduate school and say, "Hey, man, I, I can see you having a, a future." Um, one of the big ones was Jed Dannenbaum, rest in peace, passed from uh, COVID a few years back. But he he lined me up with Forrest Whitaker, uh, who eventually you know let, you know greenlit my first movie. Um, but a big one I like to talk about that that works into the theme of loss is, is Chadwick. You know, um, he when we were on set for the first Black Panther, you know. I was assured it was a disaster. You know what I mean? Like, and like, if somebody gave me a a, a, 
a, a, um, a genie with one wish left. I would have wished just that we finished and that the film was just okay. That's how that's how that's how bad I thought it was it was going, you know. Um, and he would and he would come up to me and say, "Hey, man, this thing is gonna be, this thing is gonna be amazing. The world's never seen nothing like this. It's gonna change everything." You know, he he would kind of speak, <laughs> you know, like like an absurd amount of positivity, like like to me, you know, out loud. And 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 I would think it was a tactic, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just just because he just because he saw me struggling, you know what I mean? But but what I what I came to find out was was he was the person who like saw what the movie was gonna do the clearest, you know what I'm, you know what I mean? Um, and 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 when 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 we you know when we all lost him, it it, it made me put a lot of those interactions back into perspective, you know. Um, and 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 his 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 superpower is not dissimilar to yours, Steph, when EP talks about it, but he was able to be very present, you know? Um, and he and he almost had like, he almost had like command over it, you know? Um, I, I, I would see him, you know, uh, do things that were almost, almost kind of odd, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, you know, when I would go up to him and give him a note, he would kind of do this thing where he would take a, a, a deep breath in and then a deep breath out. And then he would nod to me and then he'll, and then he'll go, he'll go knock it out. You know what I mean? And, and um, and I remember shortly after he passed, I was watching a lot of a lot of videos of, of you know, speeches that he had given and all these things. So I found out that he knew he was he knew he was he was he was he could potentially die the whole time that I knew him. You know what I'm you know what I'm saying? And I, I and I was like, okay, well maybe this was this was you know the, the knowledge he was moving with at all times. You know what I'm saying? Which is which which is why he was capable of being so present. But I would see him do that same thing, you know, like in you know before he would give a speech or. You know, before he he received some type of honor or whatever, you know, you know what I'm saying. And, and um, and for me, since 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 losing him, um, you know that that's been the that's been the 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 process for me. You know what I'm saying? Is making sure that I mean I'm I, like like I'm making sure that I'm totally here at, at this at the, at this time and and taking it in and taking everything that's that's uh, capable for me to take from this, whether it's a lesson or whether it's um, joy or, 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 or making a, a, a memory that I'll call back on, you know, um, that, that's where I'm at. And, and, and it's interesting that all four of us would be on the same, <laughs> you know, kind of talking about the same, the, the, the same thing, you know, um, in this, in this day and age where so many things competing for your, for your, for your attention mm-hmm. potentially, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that idea to, 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 to be able to make yourself be present, um, being, uh, Something that can that can turn out to be so 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 powerful for you, man. Especially in a film like that's a, you know what us making this film that's especially about the power of being seen, you know. Um, and and I think that it translates both ways, right? Like like the person who's who's seen um, can, can unlock a power in themselves, but then the person who actually does the seeing, right? Like like the person who's who who's looking at somebody for what they have as opposed to what they don't, you know. Um, what they have in the in the moment, as opposed to what they could have with with some type of investment, you know what I'm saying? It seems like the payoff for all of those characters in the film, Coach McKillop, you know, your family, you know, the Warriors, the Warriors faithful, you know, uh, the Davidson faithful, you know, what I mean, the payoff was just tremendous, you know, what I mean, just for that, just just for, just for that act, which is a which is a which is a present act, right? To see somebody, you know what I mean? You can't you can't see what's in front of you if you're not being if you're not being present, right? And you know that's a really powerful idea. You know that has a lot to do with I, I think. You know, it, 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 an authenticity on some level, like and authenticity reaches back to lived experience. Coach McKill. I mean, we we learned like Coach saw Steph and his potential because he saw himself. You know, he saw himself as a young man. He had he had gone through this experience that allowed him, you know, to see stuff uh, for who he is. And when you shift that perspective and you can truly see, it does unlock, um, you know, that, that potential uh, in, in everyone. So I think that's the power. Prox Rex, um, like, like I said it from the jump, you know, think about the folks that might be that might be listening, that's trying to find that find their way, and, and a lot of them are, are, you know, a lot of them are, are at different points in their careers, you know, um, but but 
the vast majority of the folks who, who write in or who I bump into or are affect, who are affected, they kind of like where you were, EP in 2008, 2009, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, Pete, maybe where you were when you went to journalism school. Steph, maybe where you were when you first came into the league, you know, um, and, and, and trying to find your way. We try to recommend something that might be helpful, something that helped us. You know, um, it could be a book. Um, it could be a, 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 a film or, 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 or a piece of art. So, Pete, you want to kick it off? Yeah, Prox Rex. Okay, this is Prox Rex. I'm going to kick it off with, with a film and a documentary film. Uh, and we're going to keep it in the, sports, in, the, in the sports genre. And it's called Murder Ball. You guys seen Murder Ball? Uh, it follows the American quad rugby team at the 2004 Athens Paralympics. And it's a film about athletes pushing beyond their limitations. It's, it's visceral. It's unexpected. It's thrilling. It's it's really surprising film, and I, I highly highly recommend it. For for my for my prox rec, I'm gonna go with a film as well, a nonfiction film. It's called Stand, about Mahmoud Abdul Raouf, a beautiful film about somebody who, who who who's who's been you know who's he's been kind of been compared to Steph retro, retroactively, you know, quite 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 a bit, um, and it, by his playing style and and, and um, uh, you, you know. He was the he was the best player on on, on Shaquille O'Neal's college basketball team. Crazy mm -hmm. enough, played with played on the starting five with two seven footers, and um, somehow he was the best player. But it's just a beautiful beautiful movie about uh, I mean it's about this country, man. You know what I mean? And and and, and uh, and all of his um all of his his, his, his pluses and minuses, you know. Uh, but but the movie moved me tremendously, um, and I think uh, I think it's kind of in, conver in conversation with our with our with our film as well, you know. So I guess I, I, the recs are kind of two things. I think one thing that I did uh, is, you know, sort of create a habit, right? And I think one of the habits is, is um, I this this note. I think I think it's still on our refrigerator today. But I wrote it when I was uh, right when I moved to LA. But it says um, there's 24 hours in the day. Make sure you're thinking about you know your your goals and your dreams of being a filmmaker eight of those hours right cuz you work eight hours you sleep eight hours and there's eight hours sort of left um so that's one thing is sort of create that habit to to know that there's there is enough time in the day to go after your 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 dreams cuz i think that's one of the things that kind of kind of holds young creatives up i think the other thing is is i read this book which is not a film book but it's a money book it's called rich dad poor dad mm. and that 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 book made me um realize what how to deal not to say that I'm a money expert but it, it made me realize how to deal with money how to think about money right and not and 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 understand the the difference between assets and liabilities because when I was young I was spending you know what I mean and I think that that was holding me back from buying a camera and being able to get final cut updates and all these things and so um once I understood what an asset was um, it allowed me to invest in myself and ultimately, you know, invest in my career. So I think those would be the two things. I would say uh, one of my good friends, Marty Fish, has a uh, story out on, on, on Untold about his, he's a top tier tennis prospect coming through. Him and Andy Roddick were kind of neck and neck as the uh, one and two in the U.S. Uh, from tennis representation perspective. And um, it, it speaks to a lot of different themes. Um, one, just handling expectations that you put on yourself and others put on you. Um, uh, mental health and mental uh, strategies to, to cope with stress and anxiety um, at whatever level you might experience it. And, um, and just... I think a bigger piece is just finding out who you really are and, and staying true to that, 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 uh, what you talked about, Pete, that, that level of authenticity, like you don't have to live anybody else's story or, or whatnot. And, um, it's a pretty, it's, I've not had no, it's crazy. I've, I've known him for about 10 years and did not know the ins and outs of, um, his career and, and the things that he went through. It's a really, really good, um, good film based on his career and his life and how he explains the uh, ups and downs that he went through, the, the losses and the successes. So um, it's on untold Marty Fish story. Man, thank y'all for 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 for, uh, for taking time out, out, of, out of the crazy press schedules and, and y'all lives to uh, join us on In Proximity Means the World. And um and everybody go stream uh, or or go see it might be in theater near you, depending on where you live. But but, but please check out our, our 
or a beautiful film. We all very proud of it. Stephen Curry underrated on Apple TV Plus. Appreciate y'all having us on here. This is awesome. Appreciate y'all.